Hello, my name is Dennis, and welcome to my Trailer Park White Trash Mobile Home Kitchen. I really do live in a mobile home, in a trailer park, and this is my kitchen. For this video, I'm, I'm, this is kind of an experiment. Well, let me give you this, the back story. All of my recipes, whether they're in my binders, in the cupboards, or in my books, I tell my friends, all my recipes are public domain. Anyone can have anything that they want. That's why I have a website, because I'm putting my recipes, even if it's something I originally created, I'm putting them out there for anyone to have. But there's one recipe that I, I keep hidden from everyone, and it's the one that I'm most known for, my salami pie. That's the one recipe that I won't give away. And then in one of my cookbooks, there's a savory pie from Southern Italy that very closely matches my salami pie. The salami pie recipe came down through my grandmother who came from Naples, which is in Southern Italy. So I decided I gotta try this pie and see how close this is to my original salami pie. So that's what I'm gonna work on today. Let's talk about the ingredients I'm gonna be used for making this savory pie. For the filling, I'm using one pound of ricotta cheese, then one cup of finely grated Parmesan. I'm actually using Romano cheese because I like that better. Two ounces of Gruyere cheese that I've cut into small cubes or small dice. One half pound of provolone and one half pound of mozzarella cheese, also cut into small dice. Then I have five ounces of ham, one quarter pound of salami, and then I'll be using some freshly ground black pepper, salt when I need it, and then I've got four eggs that'll go into the filling. For the crust, and this is the part I'm a little bit confused on, and this is where I always have a problem with cookbooks, it's the amount of flour. The cookbook says three and a half cups of flour and says that's equivalent to 400 grams. Three and a half cups of sifted flour is equal to about a pound, so not 14 ounces. So. Uh, the measurement, I can tell, just isn't right. I used 14 ounces of flour. That's equivalent to 400 grams. As I'm working with the crust, I can always add more flour. It's a lot more difficult to take flour out. So I've got 14 ounces of flour, two thirds of a cup of sugar, roughly seven eighths of a cup of butter. I'm using clarified butter. And then I've got actually two eggs here. One egg is gonna go into the crust and then one egg is gonna be separated. This ought to be interesting. The, the recipe calls for a, an egg yolk wash before baking. Egg yolk tends to make a very brown crust. I actually use it on baked bread. I'm curious to see what it's gonna look like on this pie because it's very, very dark. So those are the, oh, and I have also some white wine, about two tablespoons of white wine that's going to go into the crust. Again, an interesting ingredient for pie crust. So those are the ingredients for my savory salami pie. First thing I'm going to do is combine my filling ingredients. So I have my ricotta cheese and my Romano cheese. Gruyere, all chopped up. This is gonna have a lot of cheese in it. This is the provolone. And then this is the mozzarella. I had, I studied under an Italian cook for a while. Don't call it mozzarella. It's mozzarella. And then this is the diced ham. And the diced salami. It's not a whole lot to do with this just yet because really the eggs have to go in there. So. I don't know how much I'm going to be able to do with a spoon as far as mixing these ingredients. Typically, I just get my hands in there. That's four large eggs. All 
All right, while I'm doing this, let me just get some fresh ground black pepper in there. And I'm not gonna salt this because there's salt in the Romano cheese. I, I typically work without salt unless it absolutely needs it. I just know there's a lot of salt in the Romano cheese and in the mozzarella and in the salami. So I don't think this filling is gonna need any salt. In fact, my other salami pie recipe doesn't use any salt at all. All the salt comes from the cheeses. Making a mess. All right, I've, I'm pretty much satisfied with that. There's my filling. So next, I'm gonna be working on my pie crust. I have my flour in a large bowl for my crust. I'm gonna add my sugar. I broke up my butter. This is cold butter from the refrigerator. One egg. And this is what's interesting, wine. Never thought to put wine in a pie crust before. And as I mentioned at the outset, I'm not sure about the amount of flour. All right, that's about as far as I'm gonna get it with a spoon. This has to be kneaded by hand, especially to work in that butter. So onto the counter. This is where I should have my apron on because I usually get flour all over myself. And then just start working this until it comes together. And I don't think this is gonna come together. That's not even close. <laughs> See, this is why I love recipes in these cookbooks. It's like, does anyone ever test these? Or do they just look at it and say, oh, that looks like a good idea. Let's publish that. And there's a plane going overhead. That's your guarantee, folks, that I really do live in a trailer park. Okay. I'm not even going to attempt that. Another egg. And this hopefully will bring it together. But this is going to come together and this is going to be fine for my pie crust. So add an extra egg to those ingredients that I mentioned at the beginning. And there it is, as you can see, it's come together. And this is using the lighter amount of flour. Now I'm comfortable flouring this as I work with it to shape my pie crust. I'm gonna be doing two crusts, a bottom crust and a top crust. So I'm gonna divide this into two thirds and one third, about like so. This larger piece will be from my bottom crust and smaller piece for my top crust. I'm going to refrigerate this, wrap it and refrigerate it, and then I'll shape this piece for my bottom crust. Whenever I work with pastry like this, I like to put down a piece of parchment paper. It just makes it a lot easier. I can spin it around easily as I'm shaping my crust. And although I have a rolling pin, I'm just used to using my hands been doing it for years. Okay, I'm gonna turn this over, dust it lightly with flour. I 
I make a very similar crust from my other savory pies that I make. So I'm not surprised that this crust is working so well. I'm aiming to fill the inside of a nine inch spring form pan. Amazing how this crust is turning out because the measurements obviously were so far off as far as the amount of flour. This crust is working very, very nicely. I'm hardly getting any cracking along the edge. That's part of the reason why I hold my hand against the edge of it here while I'm shaping, is it does tend to reduce cracking around the edge. Almost. I'm probably going to have to go pretty near the width of this parchment paper. That's another nice thing about working with parchment paper is it's very easy to turn it over onto your hand when you have to flip the dough over. All right, I have my crust here pretty good. I, this is within a half an inch or so of this piece of paper, so I'm sure it's going to be fine. What I did with my springform pan here is I buttered the inside of the pan and then put some pieces of parchment paper on the inside. That'll help later on when I go to remove the ring, the outer ring. I don't need to butter the inside of the paper because this is non-stick parchment paper, but I wanted to butter the pan so that the paper would stick to the walls of the pan and stay up and not fall down. So now the trick is how to get this into there. And how I'm gonna do this is very gently bring in these edges and then set this in there like so. All right. And now I'm going to raise these edges up and press them against the side of the pan. Obviously, I've got a lot of extra here. As you can see, this has to all be worked in, eased in, and just pressed against the sides of the springform pan and evened out. I mean, that's the challenge there because you're, this was a flat piece of dough and now it has to be turned into basically a big bowl. And that's it. I'm going to consider that to be ready for my filling. My next step here is to fill this shell. This bowl is so heavy I don't want to just lift it and try to pour it in. And just press this down into the shell. This is a lot of filling. Okay. Now I can lift this bowl and just push the last of it in there. That is a lot of filling. When I make my other salami pie, I don't use a nine inch spring form pan. I just use a regular nine inch pie plate. 
So it only has about half this height. All right, there is my filling in my pie shell. The next thing I want to do is shape my top crust. This dough has been sitting in the refrigerator, so it's a little stiff. And by the way, that's something to keep in mind when you're working with dough that's filled with a lot of butter. If it starts to get too oily, too greasy, stop working with it. Put it in the refrigerator for 20 minutes, 10, 20 minutes, and then return to it. For this crust, I only need to shape it large enough to fit inside my nine inch spring form pan. I actually want it slightly larger than nine inches. And the reason why is because I want it to just kind of ride up around the edges a little bit so I can pinch the outer edges together and then shape that into a kind of a decorative design. All right, let me see if that's, I'll see if that's ready. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay. So what I want is a little bit of this overhang around the edges here. See how you can see two thicknesses of crust there, of shell, pastry shell. And then I want to pinch this together. And I don't care if this is over, overhangs a little bit. feel pretty good about that. I got my plastic knife out here. I'm going to trim some of this off. And then what I want to do, I'm going to save this because I have an idea for that, is I just want to kind of pinch this into a little bit of a decoration around the edge, kind of give it a fluted edge. Just going to tap that in a little bit so that it doesn't get overly dark. And then I'm going to try a trick that I've never done before. I'm going to decorate the top with a design from this. I have an egg yolk wash that I made here a little bit earlier. When working with an egg yolk wash, you can make it early. Salt, this is one yolk, maybe a quarter teaspoon to a half teaspoon of salt, and then beat that up. Um, did I mention a teaspoon or two of water? And then let it sit in the refrigerator for a while. And that, the salt, will allow the, the egg yolk to break down. Ideally, you can make this the night before and let it sit in the refrigerator, and that'll break that yolk down. An egg yolk wash typically makes a darker coating when browning than using an egg white wash, which is the lighter, lightest of the coating. And then, of course, a mixed egg and egg white would make a medium coating. Okay. I'm trying not to get too much egg yolk around the, the outer rim because I don't want that to stick. And then, Hopefully you can see that I made some leaves here from the trim. I got about 14 of them here. So I'm going to use these to decorate the outside of this. 
I have about four extra here, so I'm just going to put those in the middle, like so. And then as a final step, just brush those lightly with egg yolk. I got some extra, too much over here, so I'm just dipping that off with my brush. I don't want a thick egg yolk wash, just a light wash. All right. That is ready to go into the oven. I'm going to bake this at 375 degrees for about 50 minutes. And then we'll see how that turns out. I want you to see this as it comes out of the oven. Oh, it looks beautiful. Just beautiful. There is my torta rustica or savory country pie. This needs to cool down quite a while before I remove that outer ring. It has to kind of hold itself together. As you can imagine, there's a lot of melted cheese in there. It's almost liquid inside. So I'm going to let this cool for a while and then I'll be ready to separate that outer ring. And then even later, I'll be able to cut this. I'm ready to cut this now. I want to see what it looks like inside. Nice crumbly crust. Ooh, I can tell by the feel of that knife going through that. That's going to be a very full pie. And let's see what that looks like on the inside, breaking up a little bit there, but there's the inside. Looks almost like a quiche, but it's got plenty of salami in there, plenty of cheese. This ought to be a very delicious pie, so next step is to see how this tastes. I've been just dying to see how this is going to taste. Oh. Oh, that's good. Mmm. Is my salami pie better than this, or is this better than my salami pie? That's a tough call. I'll go decide that later. Right now, I'm going to eat my salami pie. For a printable PDF copy of this recipe with step-by-step -step photographs, visit the White Trash Cooking website and look on the homepage or in the recipe archive.